Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And happy to see many, many faces. And happy to see many, many faces on on the Zoom. Uh, it's amazing, high tech, that uh, we can do that. And 10, 20 years ago, it's impossible, but now it is a new thing, high tech. And adjusting with uh, many, many Dharma teachings um, electronically these days. And since everything is defined on interdependent, I'm sure there is a benefit. Whether you are physically in front of me or you are far away. In the Nirvana Sutra, I think it was Nirvana Sutra, where I read something, if you are capable, if you are, if you can receive teaching, even it's no problem with the distance, then you have to go sit in front of the guru or speaker, then you benefit more. But there is exception, there is a danger of your life on that trip. Then it recommended Buddha said, don't go. You can do pray from wherever you are and you don't have to go. If there is a, if there is a possibility, and I, I think cause and condition, time, energy, you're not sick and it's a manageable, then you have to go receive teaching from guru, from dharma instructors. You benefit more because you respect the dharma prioritized. But these days, many people might not have that kind of money to go overseas to receive teaching. So therefore, all you can do is that if you can do online, then um, whatever benefit you can get. But it also quality depend on where your mind is, attitude of your mind, it depends on attitude of your mind. Your attitude is a perfect way you are setting your mind is a properly, you get more benefit. So we need to work on that very individually. Individually, we need to work on our attitude. I think Attitude is a word I'm using, but also motivation. Motivation, attitude, and faith, and devotion, and connection, connection, connection. Connection is very important because you and I need to make strong connection with the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Buddha, in order to make that kind of connection, we really 
learn. We really need to learn how you attitude towards your guru. Very important because Kunjusun Jetava means the root of three jewels. It depends on your guru if you have a guru. Guru, everybody should have a guru because if you don't have a guru, you are a great tantric practitioner, but you, are, you don't have any specific guru. Then they say in a sutra, saying you are a practitioner, but it, you are not, you have nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma because you are just great practitioner, but nothing to do with the Buddhism. Simply because you have no guru. And it is mentioned many times and in many, many places, many sutra, you cannot make connection with the three jewels without guru. So guru, you have to find whether guru is alive or death. Ultimately is beyond death. So guru, if you have many gurus, choose the one important one and consolidate all of them. Guru, how you choose a guru, guru, whoever, whoever taught you changing your mind, that most beneficial to your mind with the teaching, that particular teacher is your guru. That is a personal guru. And it may not be everybody's guru, but your personal guru. Personal guru is a choose by personal. You don't have to tell everybody, you're going to be my guru, I'm going to be your disciple. Because if you do that, then really you don't mean anything. Basically, you say you and I just equally um, something like that. So keep that in mind. So first part of the, this morning, our Dharma um, classes is we're going to have Sutra of Recollection. The Sutra of the Recollection of Three Jewels we're going to read. I read in a Tibetan in case your Tibetan is so good that you understand. And then we will read in English well also if you understand English. So we're going to work on um, the Sutra of the Recollection of Three Jewels. This practice is required every day for Buddhist practitioner. Because if you don't know the, the quality and blessings of the Buddha every day, then what practice are you doing? So, and uh, now I'm going to read in Tibet as clear as possible, even though um, sometimes it's hard to be too clear, but so this is a, I uh, I do every day, and I'm ask you to do every day. It's called Sutra of Recollection of the Three Jewels. It's a found in a Kaju Moilon text, if I understand correctly. So in Tibet it says, "Tom Jee Jin Bolo Jong Zo Lu Da Da Song Jee Jum Ding 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 Na Ding Ding Jum Ba Da Jum Ba Yang Da Ba Zo Ba Song Jee Ru Ba Da Xiao Zhe Ding Ba Da Wu Ri Xiu Ba Jie Ding Jin Ba Jie Wen Du Ka Lu Jie Ba La Nan Mei Ba La Dam Nan Nan Jie Ding Ba Song Jie Jum Ding 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 Jie Ba Ding Na Su Nan Da Ge Jie Wen Ding Ba Ge Ge Zao Wan Na Qi Na Zao Wan Zhe Ba Da Ge Ru Da Jie Ba Su Nan Jie Da Nan Jie Jie Ba Jie Zang Ba Nan Jie Da Ba Zhe Nan Jie Me Du Jie Ba Jie Wen Du Ba Du Ba Da Nan Nan Da Ba Mei Ba Da Ba Mei Ba Nan Nan Mei Ba Ga Wa Kira-sar-jim-nu-bo-to-na-na-zim-ba-me-ba-sim-ji-ta-am-ji-ji-ta-am-ba-san-ji-ba-san-ba-na-am-ji-yap-ba-gu-gang-san-na-ji-yar-
Kun that section is uh, about the Buddha's quality, Buddha's quality, Buddha's power, Buddha's miracle, Buddha's that is compared with the human do not have, but the Buddha possesses. Buddha has all of those that. Now we're talking about holy dharma, holy scriptures. Mm. That. <laughs> That is a section, the quality of the Dharma. Basically, boil down to everything will be single medicine cures hundreds of thousands of disease. Single, single remedy can cure hundreds of thousands different types of disease can be cured. It's Buddha Dharma. No one cure the sickness of secondly existence, cure, completely cured, become Buddha. Without Dharma, there is no other medicine cure like that. So the enlightened being is not so sick, it's completely free from sickness. Unenlightened beings, which you and me, all the rest of the living beings, is we are sick. What kind of sickness? Karmic sick. Karmic obscuration. Sick from defilement, sick from anger, sick from jealousy, sick from desire, sick from envy. Everything, there is 84,000 types we're talking about. And I, there is no time, but I don't even know all of them. Just few I mentioned. So how you cure all of them? Single medicine, Buddha Dharma. How you apply? Practice. And how you practice? Put your body, speech, your mind. There is no other way you can practice without putting into your body, speech, your mind. So this is the Dharma. Dharma is a ultimate medicine that everybody cured from samsara and then samsara become empty and nobody in samsara going through secondly existence. All purified, all cured completely. That is Dharma. Now we move to the third one, Sangha. Um, Buddha Dharma Sangha. Sangha. So Sangha is so the Pakugendu means uh, uh, Sangha, the highest level of Sangha is the mm -hmm. Eight bodhisattvas. It's on my table this morning with the help of uh, Jeric. Uh, eight bodhisattvas, because they are 
not just only reach first Bumi, but all the way train Bumi. And they are almost Buddha. In fact, they are Buddhas of future. Future. Shakyamuni Buddha disappeared, then Bodhisattva Maitreya become Buddha. So they are all here, eight Bodhisattvas. So ultimately, ultimate Sangha is eight Bodhisattvas. And then you can say, are, without Bodhisattva, are there any Sangha? Yes, those are first Bhumi or close to be first Bhumi. They all count, all of them who accumulated merit and wisdom, and they are almost bodhisattva first bumi. Then they are all we respect. And beyond that, then everybody have practitioners of Buddha Dharma. If you have a bodhi, if you have a bodhisattva vows intact then you are part of the Sangha. If you have a vows of three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, refuge, vows, not taking the refuge, but you have to exercise every day. Take refuge from Buddha, Dharma, Sangha every day when you practice. Because if you're not doing that, then you are not uh, Eminemented, you're not applying daily life. So if you do, then you have refuge vows. When you have refuge vows, then those who do not have refuge vows, they will bow you because you are part of the Sangha, because your refuge vows is intact. Are you with me? Well, that's very good. If you're with me, I'm with you too. So that is the, um, now we will uh, do the English translation. Would you mind to read this for me? Sure. Uh, you, you may have to be okay. here, the computer, and uh, this one. You can turn this on that side, if you don't mind. They like to see you, that's okay. Yeah. Mm. Please read the Sutra of Recollection of the Three Jewels. And I have helper here. Somebody gonna help me. And Jerry, he is a bhikshu, monk, Sarva Mangala. Please. The Sutra of the Recollection of the Three Jewels. In this way, the Bhagavan Buddha is the Tathagata Arhat, completely perfect Buddha, the one with awareness and conduct, the Sugata, the one who knows the world, the charioteer who tames beings, the unsurpassable, the teacher of gods and humans, the Bhagavan Buddha. The Tathagata's compatible cause is merit. He does not waste roots of virtue. He is fully adorned with the aspects of patience. He is the basis of treasuries of merit. He is adorned by the excellent signs. The flowers of his marks are in bloom. His behavior is always appropriate. The sight of him is never disagreeable. He delights those enthusiastic with faith. His wisdom is beyond intimidations. His powers are beyond oppression. He is the teacher of all beings. He is the father of bodhisattvas. He is the king of the Aryas. He leads beings to the city of Nirvana. His pristine wisdom is immeasurable. His confidence is inconceivable. His speech is utterly pure. It is melodic. The sight of him never satiates one. His body is peerless. He is unstained by desire. He is utterly unstained by form. He is unmixed with the formless states. He is utterly liberated from all suffering. He is completely liberated from the skandhas. He is without the datus. His ayatanas are restrained. He is fully cut through the knots. He is utterly liberated from all afflictions. 
he is liberated from craving. He has crossed the rivers. His pristine wisdom is complete. He abides in the pristine wisdom of the Bhagavan Buddhas of the past, future, and present. He does not abide in nirvana. He abides in the ultimate perfection. He remains in the state of seeing all beings. These are the perfect qualities of the Bhagavan Buddha. The genuine Dharma is virtuous in the beginning, virtuous in the middle, and virtuous in the end. Its meaning is excellent. Its words are excellent. It is unmixed. It is utterly complete. It is utterly pure. It is utterly purifying. The Bhagavan taught the Dharma well. It is seeing perfectly. It is without sickness. It is timeless. It guides fully. Seeing it is meaningful. It is to know by the wise through individual direct awareness. The Dharma Vinaya spoken by the Bhagavan was well explained. It is renunciation. It brings one to perfect awakening. It is without contradiction and has unity. It is reliable. <clears throat> it brings an end to movement. The Sangha of the Mahayana is engaged in goodness. It is engaged in lucidity. It is engaged in truth. It is engaged in harmony. It is worthy of joined palms. It is worthy of prostration. It is a glorious field of merit. It is the great purification of alms. It is a fit object of generosity. It is always a great object of generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so you hear in Tibet, and then you hear in English. Me personally, this is personal. I'm not telling you, or I'm not saying everybody experiences it that way. But I experience when I look at the Tibetan texts, I see much bigger picture, much deeper um, energy and understanding. And when I read the English translation, I read, but I read is a small portion. If it's a hundred uh, number, if I read the 75% in Tibet understanding when I read, then when I switch into English translation, it becomes 25% or even a little more or less. I don't know why I feel that. This is just my thing. I'm not saying you. But anyway, next part is we're gonna, we're gonna read Buddha's names and particularly this kalpa, this eon, this kalpa means uh, during the time of you and I reincarnated in a human body. And then we had a little teeny tiny connection with the Buddha Dharma. And that particular time, that particular period, that particular time, how many Buddha there and why they not appear to all of us? Answer is uh, they are always watching us and we have problem to proceed or we have problem with our sight, our own I'm not talking about the water bubble eye. I'm talking about wisdom eye. Our wisdom eye is not that clear. But among all these countless Buddhas, why Shakyamuni Buddha did appear 
and our uh, world, samsara, Jambhadeva, is called Jambhadeva, Jambhadeva. Why Shakyamuni? Because Buddha Shakyamuni, many hundreds and hundreds of millions of kalpas go when there is all the bodhisattvas gathered in front of the Shakta Tuchi means the big Buddha Shakyamuni, father Buddha Shakyamuni. And there is a bodhisattva, a countless bodhisattva, they're talking about different realms and nobody volunteered to go to a planet where we live. And the reason we have mental, um, mental, mental disorder, we have extra mental disorder. And in other words, we are not normal, we are a little bit worse than normal. And dealing with the spiritual is a very hard. So no bodhisattva volunteer, no bodhisattva want to go there and that they, they can turn the will of Dharma. And then Shakyamuni Buddha, he voluntarily said, I'll go. And the one other reason is uh, back then, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of kalpa aeons. Back then, the planet where we live now, its whole planet is like water bubble. It's very temporary there. It can disappear. And then all the living beings inside the water bubble, like planet, are even a shorter life. So that means a human life, it's like a, one day kind of thing. Entire human life, birth and death, old age, is like the eye of Buddhist and Bodhisattva. See, everything happening within a, not even one day. So that one day for us is a long, we feel, because we are measuring, we experiencing, oh, I was born, I was grown up, I was getting old, I, I'm ready to go now because you don't have choice anyway. So um, all of those things are happening. But what happening there are our, regardless that, that our life is so, so, so short. So the Bodhisattva, everybody, why they know voluntary is uh, that is a so short the realm is so fragile, like water bubble, and the living beings inside that is so short, I'm not going to be able to help that. So everybody is discouraged to go in there, except Buddha Shakyamuni, voluntarily. And that is the reason that all Buddhist practitioners on planet Earth hear Buddha name. And just even you are human, Majority of people will don't hear Buddha. Even they are in the planet Earth. The only selected numbers are here. And guess what? We are one of them. We are some of them that we hear the Buddha. And we receive teachings from Buddha. So therefore, make save my energy so that let, let's recite the names of the Buddha and present Buddha, how many Buddhas are there other than a Shakyamuni Buddha? And what's wrong with you and I can't even see it. And that is the issue here. Let me read the names of the Buddha. Reading the names of the Buddha, making connection with all those Buddhas, and then Every time we hear the names of the Buddha, our negative karma is melting. If it's like ice is melting, it becomes small. If it's a big, it gets smaller. If it's too many, it becomes less. If it's too thick, it becomes thin. And that is what's happening. It mentioned in the Nirvana Sutra, 
In fact, I am going to read from the Ruana Sutra for you and me, so we both can benefit. And listen carefully and try to visualize all Buddha's bodhisattvas, especially Buddha's, in front of your imagination, in front of you, where you receive the names of the Buddha transmission. So the sutra I'm reading, names of Buddha. Tanda Yuga Sonja Dhammi Padme Bala Chanta Lo. That means right now abiding that the Buddhas preside in front of us. All the Buddhas who are in front of us right now. It's called Tanda Yuga Sonja Dhammi Padme. Dhammi means a countless Buddhist, Buddhist Satwa. Tanda Yuga means they are preside, means they are sitting in front of us or standing in front of us. Each sentence is each Buddha name I'm calling, reciting for all of us. ジャボラジャンドロサンジェナンバルジネサンジェダンガンジャラジャンドロサンジェダウエダルジャンドロサンジェプジャラジャンドロサンジェジンジャボラジャンジェナンバルジャンドロサンジェウドルジャンドロサ
Sanjeeo that is the um, Nirvana Sutra uh, present to Buddha that we recite. And Buddha mentioned here to the uh, Bodhisattva Nsinite means uh, the faith and Nsinite. Faith and uh, faith and uh, devotion, Bodhisattva. Buddha mentioned to Bodhisattva who asked this question that uh, can you share your name? Shakyamuni <coughs> Buddha, please share your name with us. And then also Buddha said in the present, it will uh, tremendous benefit all sentient beings. And countless sentient beings will benefit in the future. Would you share? And then respond to that Buddha Shakyamuni say, let's go, let's go. Yes, sir, yes, sir, I will. But his Buddha saying, the complete the, the sagum means the uh, ball of planet Earth, ball, ball like ball, ball of Earth, size. A little pill size, and we count the completely planet Earth that turn into pill size, and all count can be counted, but the name of Buddha cannot count that many. And we keep talking about Earth, water, and space. They said the end of space can be discovered but the end of name of Buddha will not discover that much deeper, that much wise. Buddha mentioned, but however, dear son, means the Bodhisattva, Shakyamuni is talking to the Bodhisattva, said, dear son, I will share you brief, just a little bit. And then that little bit is I just read for present Buddha. Of course, there is a past Buddha. Of course, there is a future Buddha. Of course, there is a Bodhisattva, countless Bodhisattva. Those sections that we haven't touched, those sections we are not talking about that today. So now, and his accent is more familiar with you than my accent. <laughs> I prostrate to the countless, limitless, presently abiding Buddhas. I prostrate to the one million Buddhas named Prasinnajit. I prostrate to the Buddha stainless, refined gold dust. I prostrate to the Buddha limitless illum illumination. I prostrate to the Buddha king illuminating light like the mandala of the sun. I prostrate to the Buddha heaped incense. I prostrate to the Buddha body of 100,000 lions. I prostrate to the Buddha, complete play of lions. I prostrate to the Buddha, king of mountain of completely radiant good qualities. I prostrate to the Buddha, king of jewels, blissful abode of good qualities. I prostrate to the Buddha, king perfectly adorned with jeweled flowers. I prostrate to the Buddha, bearer of hardships. I prostrate to the Buddha, Mark of Sumeru. I prostrate to the Buddha, becoming King Sumeru. I prostrate to the Buddha, Ratna Shri. I prostrate to the Buddha, Ratna Chandra. I prostrate to the Buddha, Blazing Jewel. 
I prostrate to the Buddha, Ratna Vyuham. I prostrate to the Buddha, Withstander of Hardships, the Roar of Lions. I prostrate to the Buddha, King Great Light. I prostrate to the Buddha, Unchangeable. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vaishajaraja. I prostrate to the Buddha, Perfectly Ornamented. I prostrate to the Buddha, Gone to the Floating Palace. I prostrate to the Buddha, Parasol of Moons. I prostrate to the Buddha, Pervasive Light. I prostrate to the Buddha, Mani Raja. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vipashin. I prostrate to the Buddha, Shikin. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vishvabhu. I prostrate to the Buddha, Krakuchanda. I prostrate to the Buddha, Kanakamuni. I prostrate to the Buddha, Kashyapa. I prostrate to the Buddha, Megaraja. I prostrate to the Buddha, Dharmagarbha. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sandalwood Flower. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sandalwood Petal. I prostrate to the Buddha, Supreme Mind. I prostrate to the Buddha, Peerless Subduer. I prostrate to the Buddha, Drum of Honey. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vipashin. I prostrate to the Buddha, Illuminating Light of the Sun and Moon. I prostrate to the Buddha, Invincible Light. I prostrate to the Buddha, King endowed with perfect ornamentation. I prostrate to the Buddha, Rays of Light, King of completely pervasive qualities. I prostrate to the Buddha, King of the Sound of the Lion, that destroys the four Maras. I prostrate to the Buddha, Fearless Vajra. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vaidurya Light. I prostrate to the Buddha, King, Mount Sumeru. I prostrate to the Buddha, King of Immaculate Light Rays. I prostrate to the Buddha, Bhadra Shri. I prostrate to the Buddha, Limitless Light Rays. I prostrate to the Buddha, Complete Play of Dharani. I prostrate to the Buddha, King of Power of the Heroically Going Forth Samadhi. I prostrate to the Buddha, King Sovereign of Virtuous Seeing Samadhi. I prostrate to the Buddha, Unsurpassed Qualities. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sovereign Miracles. I prostrate to the Buddha, formless, Formlessness of Marks. I prostrate to the Buddha, Scattered Body. I prostrate to the Buddha, Unmarked by Stain. I prostrate to the Buddha, Unmarked by Sickness. I prostrate to the Buddha, Unmarked by Contact. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sovereign of Samadhi. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sovereign of Wisdom Samadhi. I prostrate to the Buddha, Sovereign of the Precious Body. I prostrate to the Buddha, Condenses All. I prostrate to the Buddha, Completely Radiant with Glorious Kindness. I prostrate to the Buddha, Shikin. I prostrate to the Buddha, Vishvabhu. I prostrate to the Buddha, Krakuchanda. I prostrate to the Buddha, Kanakamuni. I prostrate to the Buddha, Kashyapa. I prostrate to the Buddha, mind attached to pleasant sound. I prostrate to the Buddha, Supriya. I prostrate to the Buddha, Akshobhya. I prostrate to the Buddha, mark of Mount Sumeru. I prostrate to the Buddha's lion's melody. I prostrate to the Buddha, lion's mark. I prostrate to the Buddha, sovereign of clouds. I prostrate to the Buddha, always peaceful. I prostrate to the Buddha, mark of the sense powers. I prostrate to the Buddha, Ananta Vabhasa. Prostrate to the Buddha, mark of Brahma. I prostrate to the Buddha, gone beyond all worldly suffering. I prostrate to the Buddha, Tamala Patrachandana Gandha. I prostrate to the Buddha, form of Mount Sumeru. I prostrate to the Buddha, king of the sovereign clouds. I prostrate to the Buddha, destroyer of all worldly fears. I prostrate to the Buddha, Nirmanakaya Shakyamuni. Thank you. You went very well. Om Nirmune
Oh. 
Oh, that's a very beautiful chanting together, everybody. And if, if you and I become practitioner, I mean real practitioner, then chanting the Buddha's name is making yourself closer to the Buddha's mind and Buddha's blessings, Buddha Chakyamun. So, some practitioners do hundred thousands recitation of Buddha mantra and dedicate an hour or more every single day and still you pay your bill and work. <laughs> Because it's funny that some ask the sadhu who is meditating and they ask him, regular people, how are you not working and how are you, why don't you work? You look a healthy person. Why don't you work and earn money just like everybody else? And he replied, he says, the whole world is working. Why I have to work? <laughs> <laughs> the whole world, W-O-R-L-D, is working, working for me. And why I have to work? And then, uh, then he says, uh, samsara will work. So, renunciation practitioner who renounce everything don't work. Because when you work, then you are not practicing renunciation. You are opposite of renunciation. You practice it. And that's what they say. And then somebody asks a question, how can you survive? And how can you survive without, without money, without food, without clothes? How can you survive? You say you practice renoun renunciation. And uh, that sadhu saying, I get everything I wanted and the universe will give and provide me. Therefore, I don't have any shortage. The shortage is only samsara people, people in the mundane people. They have a shortage of their shortage of everything in their mind. And I renounce everything, therefore I have no shortage of anything. That was their say. That was the say. So in the Sutra, Buddha Shakyamuni say that the whole world, planet Earth, Shakyamuni Buddha say, planet Earth is no food left. No grain, no vegetable, no, no fruit, no vegetable, no nothing, no grains, nothing left. And every become, every be, everybody experiencing hungry goes wrong. Like uh, no food, no water, everything gone. Completely wiped out. Buddha Shakyamuni said, take my word. If you a genuine Dharma practitioner, you will not death. Even whole food and drink is disappeared on planet Earth. And whole Earth, whole living beings on planet Earth is not even having a handful of food. The richest person might not have a handful of food. And everybody live on one grain, one piece of rice a day. If somebody living, you won't death. You will not death. You will not starvation. You will not die from shortage of food. And Buddha said, take my word. And there is a shlokan which I don't remember now, but he says, 
if you are follower of Buddha, you are free from starvation and you don't have to keep anything for yourself. It's all come to you. In other words, you will sustain your body without eating, drinking too much. Just like normal, what samsara people do. So, Buddha even said that. So anyway, before I lose energy, I better go back to what I really regional plan to talk about. <laughs> so, but they are related to the talk. So I recommend you want to make a lot of differences in your life. You have to do it and don't wait it. In other words, you want to experience the Dharma, you earn it and you practice it. You worry about the life after death, you do practice now. And care about all sentient beings in the universe, then do practice. And you care about all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, especially watching us. And they are witness us. They are watching. If you care about that, do a little practice. And then it says, if you want to be free yourself from uh, three poisons, three poisons. If you want to free yourself from three poisons, so practice is better because that's an antidote. Nobody can come help you you have to do it yourself because it is your personal journey, it's your personal liberation, it's your personal life. So, Buddha is saying, I like to help you, but you really need to be help yourself where I can help you. You have to come to the point where I can reach you. And in a, they're talking about you need to look up and you need to see me first <laughs> so I can help you. Otherwise, I cannot help you because you're not looking at me. You're not contacting with me. You're not asking help. How can I help you? I can't force you because you really need to ask. You need to open up yourself. You need to see me. Then, there, you are giving me a chance to help you. Together, it's perfection. Practice is perfect because of that. So now I am in Nirvana Sutra, teaching from Nirvana Sutra, benefit of Dharma practice, benefit of Daruni, Benefit of recitation of the mantra. Benefit of hearing the Buddha name. Now we are going to talk and translate in excellent English since I have almost perfect English. <laughs> almost you can understand. Very close. <laughs> so I am in chapter Page 30 in a Nirvana Sutra text. Kangan Dode and Dele, Sekje Tona, Plan Namu, Plan Nanja, Rada Gawa, then somebody the first. God and Dreaming God, invisibles and visibles all become happy when you recite the Dharuni mantra. So wherever in your home, on the mountain, or ocean, beach, anywhere, when you recite the Buddha's mantra, all invisible living beings, including God and demigod, because they have a, a supernatural power of hearing. So they can, God wrong, they can hear the Dharma. They all please to they all flannam, flannam, your radha gauda, tremendous happy, simple satisfaction when you 
recite the mantra, all God and demigod, all living beings, invisible, visible, so very happy. And that including animals, that is what we see uh, nearby us, animals. Nothing made you more happy than when you hear the sound of the mantra of Buddha name because it's a soothing and a releasing. Even somebody angry, immediately it dropped. Nirvana Sutra, when you hear Nirvana Sutra and somebody reciting Nirvana Sutra, he or she is a great practitioner, everybody will respect. You will have faith and devotion by looking at somebody, he or she has a faith and devotion with the Nirvana Sutra. That makes other people also faith and devotion. And then he says, uh, if you write one shloka, one verses from Nirvana Sutra, and every day you read, you are a great practitioner. Just one shloka, read every day from Nirvana Sutra. You can, you can read Jukam. And if you share that with somebody, that person now have a seed of enlightenment. You plant the seed. And a seed, Buddha nature, you water them. Now the seed will grow. Logan, if you recommend somebody else read the four verses, just four verses from Nirvana Sutra. By the way, there are 300 pages. <laughs> I'll be doing, um, uh, in a good day, I did one time completely those and then other practice. Sometimes I have to do two days because uh, interrupt. By holding and buying and copying Nirvana Sutra, tremendous benefit for you. Chance again. Put the Nirvana Sutra in your table, and if you do three prostrations, your lot of lot of major negative karma will be purified. If you put the pecha. Sutra on the table and do three prostration. Now, some of you not ever do prostration. We have we have a very jiggly. Uh, we have a, we have a lot of obstacles in our body. Some of us, and then in that case, you can bow with folding the hand, whatever level you can do. That it will remove your negative karma. And then it says that Chancha Ji Chujya Nanda Ndaya Nanda Sanjya Ji Sanjya. From the Vana Sutra, if you hear and read one Buddha name, which this morning we did in English and Tibetan both. Sanjya means one name, Buddha. Chancho Sanjya Manjya, one Bodhisattva name. You call for a heartfelt, if you call, you will not be unhappy person in this lifetime. If you make call bodhisattva and make connection, and then it's a you won't see negative uh, vision, negative negative things outside the world. In other words, when you hear the news, you will not get angry. <laughs> you will have more compassion for them. Yeah. When you leave this body behind, you will be in escort with, with the bodhisattvas. They will escort you to the Buddha realm. Dagger and Jacinja come number of what nature the Jewel Juro. 
all followers of Nirvana Sutra, they will reincarnate in a one particular location, one particular country, one particular realm, where they will all understand the Nirvana Sutra and naturally they are drawn to and they will practice. He just searching why that happened. Why that happened? Because you had a connection with the Nirvana Sutra before this lifetime, like before this. If you practice Nirvana Sutra, if you get a Nirvana Sutra in your hand, and if you read, and if you practice that Nirvana Sutra, Zonsun Zimban, Sanjay means you are doing activities of Buddha Shakyamuni. Sanjay Jukun Zimban, Sanjay Sampa Lado, whoever involved with the Buddha's activity, they are called Bodhisattvas. So you may be a human body with a mind of Bodhisattva involved with the Buddha activity. What a beautiful. Then Buddha says, you are part of Bodhisattva group. And then, you the the old practice of Nirvana Sutta will again, 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 many lifetimes, they reincarnate in the same place and they improve their karma. Then it's some question about the Sunjata 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 Okay, so that is what I read and now it comes in the English. I think I will just take here. Anyone who recites the words from this sutra will overjoy the gods and have pleasant rebirth. So become good practitioner of Nirvana Sutra. Benefits are that it mentioned here. They will always be awaited upon venerate and will naturally practice virtue. So some people have a naturally uh, interest in the spiritual and some people have naturally interest about killing. Some people in, uh, naturally interested about the fighting. Some people are different because whatever package you are deal with the previous life and continue you have that habit. Whoever hears these all expensive great liberation sutra and having become joyful with the mind of faith and respect. Faith and respect are very important because one of the key factors of understanding Dharma is the faith and the respect. When we don't have respect and we don't have faith, then everything is not too clear, not too good. For, for example, if you don't have respect and faith with your uh, partner, your guru, your parents, your children, you have major problem because you have no respect, you have no faith. So it is a really most important quality is missing there. And without faith and respect, in other words, Dharma will not automatically or accidentally you will get it. You will not understand Dharma properly. Simply, there is no faith, there is no respect. So, what I learn, what we need to learn is we need to respect all major religions. And we need to work on our faith towards the Buddha Dharma. If you really care and love yourself, you need to learn how to develop faith and respect for yourself, for everybody.
write a letter or causes causes c a u s a causes it adapt it adapt it hold on to or prostrate so nirvana sutra when i'm talking you can have respect right down moment you're benefiting right there so it is a mental attitude how you hear and how you put into your practice it, and expresses the name of a single Buddha. We recite many Buddha's name this morning in English and Tibet. Now you and I need to remember how important the reciting Buddha's name, Buddha Shakyamuni, or Muni Muni Mahamuni Yeshua, the other Gati Gati Parangati Parasam Gati Bodhi Yeshua or Namu Buddhaya, Namu Dharmaya, Namu Sangha. We need to remember that. Single Buddha, or the name of a single Bodhisattva within this enumeration of the Dharma, that person in this very life, in this very life means right now your life, will achieve blessed. In other words, you will not be suffering too much. You will not experience a lot of stress, pain, tremendous suffering, pain, and misery. You won't have that. Simply, you recite a mantra, Buddha's name. Then it says, they will not experience any negativities. How can you experience the negativities when you experience a mantra experience? You, when you involve the mantra, it replaces negative activities because negative activities are no longer welcome there because you're simply busy with Buddha's mantra activity. And moreover, when this life ends, means when you go through a pardo, because a go through a pardo is very easy. We are just a matter of half death and half life. Why I say half life, half death is every moment we have death, every moment we have bar birth. It's just you and I have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> that does not mean they don't exist. Every moment is a little birth, every moment a little death. So we may think that I never dared since my child now is an attachment of continuity. It's called attached to a continuation, continue, uh, yun, means continue, yun, yun. Mm. But every moment is a changing. And I be change last four or five years, tremendously change. I feel sometimes, uh, am I the same person? I used to be five, six, seven years ago. I feel like I'm really different. The way I see things are different, the way I think things are different, and all things appear to me is different. That shows impermanent is occurring. Impermanent is right that moment, every moment. So here it says they will, we will not experience any negativities if we decide to practice Dharma. Moreover, when this life ends, we transmigrate, we transmigrate because so we leave the body because the body is nothing other than four elements. And then we go pado with the mind only body. All of it says, all of it says, all of it says, all us bodhisattva will come before them. So when we leave, when we go to Pado, the bodhisattvas are waiting for you. Why bodhisattva are waiting for you? Because you did in your dharma practice. And particularly we are talking about the uh, Nirvana Sutra today. Bodhisattva will go before them on on the path, lead them, means the bodhisattva, eight bodhisattva will lead you to Devachin. 
and they will be born into one of the completely pure about a b o d e about in one of our worldly realms why why is this it is because they adopt this sutra and hold it as a dharani mantra we recite mantra adopting this sutra and holding it as a dharani is holding the body of buddha buddha's physical appearance buddha's body holding the body of the buddha is manifesting as an actually body sattva because we become body sattva that is the reason we able to access the buddha's body and therefore all those who do so have the same training as us because of those courses and conditions all those who have hold this sutra as dharani aspire to be born in one place and not to be separated that means similar like you and me many many hundreds of thousands and we all reincarnate in a particular area particular room particular place will you can hear the nirvana sutra again until you become buddha is that beautiful so this is uh, what i am dealing with it you may not understand it you may appreciate it you may not appreciate it but that's what's going on in me and i'm sharing that with you hoping may all beings benefit some size some level some kind so that's my wish aspiration prayer thank you now we recite mantra everybody so om mm mane -hmm. mane maha mane swa please everybody do can you read om mane mane maha mane
talk on Nirvana Sutra or enough. I want to say this as a more talk or wow. So I am Nirvana Sutra page 100, 151 151 so here I will share some so so what it's saying is in uh, English. So English is that the son of lineage, son of the lineage. When this sutra is read aloud and held in the mind, held in the mind, all of the heavy negativities of countless samsaras, samsaras, afflictions, will be purified. Whoever hears this sutra, Nirvana Sutra, do you hear? I said Nirvana Sutra. Whoever hears this sutra, hears the names of the Buddha. Whoever sees this sutra, sees the face of Buddha. Whoever holds this sutra holds the body of the Buddha. Whoever practices this sutra practices the activities of the Buddha. Whoever explains this sutra explains the activity of the Buddha. Whoever understands the meaning of this sutra, understands the meaning of Buddha. Whoever practices the activities of the Buddha and excellently realize the meaning of the Buddha, what that one brings about the complete non-existence of the inflections. So, that one brings about the complete non-existence of afflictions. Why, why is that? Because this sutra has come into your hand. Your afflictions are completely abandoned. Son of lineage. So then it talked about the um, difficulties of the name, difficulties of hear the name of Buddha in the universe. Because there's too many cloud, too many foggy, and uh, contact uh, Buddha, hear the name of Buddha, it's uh, like a seeing stars in the daytime. So it's almost impossible to see the stars in the daytime. Like uh, same analysis that is contact and hear the name of Buddha is like seeing stars in the daytime, like that. So they talk about, the, from here, they talk about the, <laughs> I will read a few sentences and then stop here. That's not the part of I want to talk today. Son of the lineage, we count 8,000 eons as a single day and then 
30 of those days are one month and 12 years have passed. One Buddha will, it says 12 of those months are one year. When 10 hazelian, what's the hazelian? H-E-Z-I-L-L-I. Hexillion. Hexillion eons of such, such year have passed. One Buddha will arise to be encountered. Compared to the meeting that single Buddha that arose after that enumeration of eons has been passed for someone to meet with this sutra is even more specially rare, R-A-R-E, -E, rare. So the Kantu country with the Nirvana Sutra is not easy task. If you understand at least as much as what I love understand, then we have some business to do. But if you don't understand, we have no business to do. Sarva Mangalam. Okay, let's recite mantra again. Om about this long mantra before I forget I want to share with you all especially people far away this mantra is not just mantra 80 hundred thousand Buddha recite this mantra in a single time and this is the uh, one of the Bodhisattva presented in front of the Shakyamuni Buddha and the Shakyamuni agreed and if you don't trust this mantra, you simply don't trust 80, 100,000 Buddhas. I, before I forget, I want to share with you. So this mantra has a reason that uh, we are reciting. Now we put into practice everybody and you practice this whenever you can 
because we have a lot of time. We know a lot of time. We know we have a lot of time. When we go along to Pardo, then you will know you have a lot of time you just wasted. Oh, let's recite. <laughs> Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sangraya, Adite Dharane Kiyada, Arayane Bhavane, Sarva Dharma Nirvane, Ejamana Devayana Dhrimala Supari Dharma Nekana Vara Rinya Saya Tamale Tari Hulu Hulu Shere Menda Menda Yeah. 
the program. If anybody sing a song, you guys are going to sing a song or not today? Yeah. Go ahead then. Our program is uh, completed and Doha song is still if you can. We'll sources of power. Sources of power. Let's practice the sources of power. Please do so, sir. Sources of power. Brian, you want to come here? Or? Oh, okay. There's a whole lot of power in my view. Free from extremes beyond concepts. There's a whole lot of power right here in the heart. What's been pure from the very start? There's a whole lot of power in my meditation. Undistracted and reference free. A whole lot of power is what I find in the great clear light, the great clear light. There's a whole lot of power 
when I act because whatever happens, I'm relaxed. There's a whole lot of power flowing easily when actions are natural, relaxed, and free. There's a whole lot of power in result of pure reality recognizing itself. There's a whole lot of power in the fruit of this great variety being naturally free. There's a whole lot of power in my smile. I precisely follow the Lama's commands. There's a whole lot of power because nothing is wrong. No vows have been broken, no harm has been done. There's a whole lot of power in my practice because whatever happens, I adapt to it. There's a whole lot of power because in the end, all appearances are my friends. I say all appearances are my friends. Yeah. Sirwa Mangalam. Sirwa Mangalam. Sirwa Mangalam. Sirwa Mangalam. Sirwa Mangalam. Sirwa and we all try to do good dharma practice, try to do best practice, best, best bodhicitta, best practice, everybody. And that will be great gift for all mother sentient beings. And uh, nothing makes a smile on the face of Buddha's bodhisattva when you practice dharma. Thank you.